Welcome to Bringing the Word to You. I am your host, Minister Tim Greco, coming out of Omaha, Nebraska. I know how hard and difficult it is for some of you to get to church and Bible study, so I want to go ahead and bring the word to you. You know, God is a good God. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. All thanks to my personal Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for the opportunity to teach His Word, thanking Him for taking me where I once was to where He has brought me to today. Thank you guys so much for your ongoing love, prayers, support, and contributions to the ministry. God's doing so many great things through this ministry. People are coming to salvation, repentance, and giving a hope in Jesus that will not fail them. Please go visit our website at www.timothygrecoministries.org and go ahead and look around and it would be a privilege to have you. Please check out our radio programs as well. They air in Omaha and Lincoln on Saturdays at 5.30 p.m., on Sundays at 12.30 p.m., in Omaha on 6.60 a.m., and in Lincoln on 106.7 f.m. Please go to the site, www.timothygrecoministries.org, and all the times and information is on there, as well as this television program. You know, what God has done for me in my life is just absolutely amazing. I was addicted to drugs and alcohol at the age of 12 years old. I was out on the streets at the age of 14. I became a father at the young age of 16. I had many run-ins with the law, my first ones around 13 and again at 14 and um, a couple more times after that as well. There was an emptiness and a void on the inside of me that I was trying to fill. And I went down a lot of different roads. I went down a lot, a lot of different avenues and all roads led back to Jesus. See, before my relationship with Jesus, I was using my freedom to serve the enemy. Now, if you would have told me that I was living for Satan or I would have called you crazy because when you, when you say someone's living for Satan, you kind of think of like, I don't, you know, maybe in a living room setting with the candles and, you know, worshiping Satan and, you know, the, 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 the goat horns and all that stuff. But if you're not living for God, you are living for the enemy. And while I thought I was a good person, guess what? The Bible doesn't say if you're a good person, you go to heaven. The Bible says you must call upon the name of the Lord and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. See, you must be born again to see the kingdom of God. Being born again is a choice. Right now you can choose to be reborn spiritually by just calling upon the name of Jesus and saying, Lord, I ask that you forgive me for all of my sins. Lord, I ask that you wash me, cleanse me, purify my heart, come into my heart as my personal Lord and Savior. I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus. I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. Lord, I ask that I may be born again. Give me your Holy Spirit as I receive it by faith. In the name of Jesus, amen. See, God gives the grace of salvation. God was graceful and sent his son Jesus to die for you. <laughs> I have children, and I... I, I got to be honest, I wouldn't give them up for anybody. <laughs> you have children, you wouldn't give them up for anybody either. But God not only sent his son Jesus for you, but Jesus was obedient all the way up until the point of death. Why wouldn't you want a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week friend? Why wouldn't you want a counselor? Why wouldn't you want a protector? Why wouldn't you want a provider? Why wouldn't you want identity? Why wouldn't you want purpose? I'm going to keep going because I'm going to annoy you. Why wouldn't you want love? Why wouldn't you want freedom? Why wouldn't you want goodness? Why wouldn't you want kindness? Should I keep going? 
some people right now are sitting there, well, man, anybody that denies that sure is goofy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> See, you're not perfect, just like I am far from perfect. But it's better to be imperfect with a perfect God than be imperfect by yourself. Because my imperfections, I have the Lord with me to help me through my imperfections. The biggest lie from the enemy is you have to get right before you come to God. No, you don't. You have to just call upon his name. You have to just confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Just confess it. You have to believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Believe. 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 Confess. See, I have a relative that is so caught up in the things of this world. When we were born in the sin-filled, corrupted world, we were taught to go to the bars. We were taught to go to the clubs. We were taught, I have your back. Let's retaliate. Let's fight. We were taught to argue. We were taught to hate. We were taught, we were taught, we were taught by the enemy in this world that he roams around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. But when you come to Jesus, you are transformed by the renewing of your mind. Everything you've learned in this world from a young age that's not of God was from the enemy to kill, steal, and destroy you and everybody around you. He has put people in your life to abuse you, people in your life to manipulate you, people in your life to lie to you, people in your life to hold you down, people in your life to keep you from the truth, people in your life to destroy you. And yet you still want to serve and live a God, for a God that's doing that to you? And then people are denying the only one that can save you, and his name is Jesus. See, some of you are sinking in that ship of sin. You're going to drown right into the ocean. But when you drown, it is nobody's fault because you chose to stay on that ship. There's a lifeboat right there. There's a, there's a lifeboat right there waiting for you to jump, to choose to jump off that ship onto the lifeboat and be saved, <laughs> taken to shore. What are you doing? You've been lied to. You've been tricked, manipulated, deceived. Because the enemy doesn't want you saved. The enemy doesn't want you to know the truth. The enemy doesn't want you healed, delivered, set free. The enemy doesn't want that. He doesn't want you to know one plus one is two. He wants you to keep on thinking that it's ten. Then he'll try to trick you some more to make you think it's nine. Then he'll trick you some more and try to get you to think one plus one is eight. Then when that doesn't work, he'll get you to think one plus one is seven. You'll live in that for a little bit. Come to the realization that one plus one is six, or come to the realization it's not seven. Then you'll start thinking one plus one is six. You'll start living in that for a little bit. Wait a minute, one plus one isn't six. Maybe it's five. So you'll start living. Wait a minute, there's something not right about this. One plus one, it can't be five. And you'll start living a little bit. You'll start thinking it's four. Maybe one and one is four. No, it's not four. You'll live a little bit longer. Start thinking it's two. Then one day, you're going to be sitting there like I was. December 24, 2001. 
It was snowing outside. I was in this home of a family that I didn't really know. I was out on the streets at a young age and I was sitting there on Christmas Eve, December 24, 2001. And I said, Lord, there's got to be something better in life than this. I'm out on the streets. My family has neglected me, abandoned me, rejected me. I'm dropped out of school. I'm about to be a father. I'm 16. I got stuff in my pocket that shouldn't be in there. Lord, there's got to be something greater in life than this. So I got down on my knees. I was like, Lord, I confess with my mouth that you are Lord. I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. Please forgive me for my sins. Come into my heart as my personal Lord and Savior. Give me your Holy Spirit, Lord God, and change my life in the name of Jesus. And he sure did. Now let's be open, honest, real, and transparent. It's not about being perfect. Stop trying to be perfect. You'll never be perfect. I will never be perfect. But we can be open. We can be honest. We can be genuine. We can be transparent. So are there squirrels running around and birds flying around? And <laughs> There's a squirrel running around behind me in the leaves or something. It's nice out here. We were going to speak about God's creation and how God's creation speaks to us without even using words, but we ask the Holy Spirit to have His way as He leads this program, and this is for somebody. When I got saved at 16, I ran until I was 29. I ran for 13 years. Just like Jonah ran a really far distance when he was only the distance God was calling him to speak judgment to the Ninevites was a shorter distance. He decided to run a longer distance and go through more heartache. He was tossed overboard in the sea. He was in the belly of a whale for three days. Some of you are being tossed over sea. Some of you are being tossed out of the boat. Some of you are in the belly of a whale, miserable, lost, confused, Running and running and running and running and running. When God is saying, Come unto me, all ye who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Cast all your cares on me, because I care for you. Cast means to heavily throw on. He wants you to heavily throw your stuff onto Him, because... He doesn't want you to carry it anymore. You can't carry it. You're too weak to carry it. And he says you can heavily throw it onto him because he's strong enough to take it. He's not only strong enough to take your worries, cares, fears, anxieties, but he's strong enough to take everybody who's ever lived, everybody who's living, and everybody who's going to live. He's able to do that. He's strong enough. So, give it to God. See, where people go wrong is they say, God will never give you more than what you can handle. Yes, He will. Those are people that think they know the Word and they don't. They're using their sword and they're chopping themselves up and they're chopping everybody else up. If you don't know the Word, stop trying to say it because you're messing things up. The Bible says that God will never give you a temptation more than what you can handle. Meaning every time the enemy tempts you, God will show you a way out. He'll not only show you a way out, but he'll give you the strength to take out. It is your choice. It is my choice to continue to live in it. Jesus didn't die on a cross for us to live in sin like some of these feel-good, tickle-your-ear preachers are preaching. Jesus died on the cross to give you an opportunity to go from fake and false to real and truth. From being stuck and in bondage to being set free and having freedom. 
You know, I went to a church the other day here in good old Omaha, Nebraska. It was a baptism service. So many people in the in the in the sanctuary were visitors. We go and enjoy a baptism service. These people just came to salvation. They are about to get baptized. And the preacher comes out, you know, I'm excited for a church service. This rock and roll band comes out with the lights and the smoke machines and the they were playing ACDC and Metallica. I said, wait, I'm at church, right? I'm I'm at this is church, right? I'm at church. Oh. Pastor comes out. He's wearing a um I forgot what the actor's what the person's name was. Last name is Perry. Uh it was like a Led Zeppelin Metallica Nirvana shirt or something. And when I remember Googling the name on his shirt, it's a real common uh, musician like that. I slip in my mind right now, but I Googled it. This person dry, died from drug addiction and, and substance abuse and overdose. And the pastor's wearing this shirt. Now, I'm not judging him. I'm not putting him down. I'm not better than him at all. But where I was getting at was, you got young people in here. You got baby Christians Googling this famous person on your shirt. And so when you're finding out that the person on your shirt died of drug and alcohol addiction and 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 overdose and you know cocaine and heroin and stuff after listening to the ACDC Metallica band talk about the enemy coming in man so then we're at a baptism service you know we're getting I want to hear about baptism I want to hear about being born again I want to hear about repenting I want to hear about hell I like hearing about hell so people are aware where they're going when they're not born again. See, if you want your ears tickled, I'll tickle your ears. Come on, I'll tickle them. I'll tell you of a place called hell if you're not born again. But it's good to hear. I always hear the older generation talk about us younger generation, how we don't preach on hell and repentance enough. Well, here it is. I make sure in every one of my programs I preach on hell. And if you're not born again, that's where you go. Because you're choosing to sink in that ship. You're choosing to drown. You're choosing to not be born again. When God is right there saying, come on. Homosexuals, come on. Adulterers, come on. Fornicators, come on. Pedophiles, come on. Alcoholics, come on. Drug addicts, come on. Because you are loved. Then people want to twist and turn that, that I'm preaching a feel-good message. No, you're loved. But that sin that you're choosing to live in is not. You were not born that way. You ain't fooling nobody but yourself. Well, anyway, the pre preacher gets up there. He starts talking about money. Okay, Jesus spoke about money. Not a huge deal to start, right? I was kind of shocked. You know, baptism service, people just gave their life to Jesus. I was like, all right, let's hear about being born again. Let's hear about heaven. Let's hear about baptism. Yeah. He starts talking about money. So I'm like, okay, okay, okay. A minute or two of this. Okay, okay, okay. Jesus spoke about money. Okay, okay. 45 minutes after Metallica and Led Zeppelin and ACDC, rock and roll band, we're at church. After the pastor wearing a shirt of this guy that just died of substance abuse, drug addiction, a famous singer, I hope it pops in my mind before the end of this video. His last name was uh, Perry, I believe, the, the, the Perry. Uh, but anyway, so then he starts talking. He says, uh, the amount of money you give today shows how much you love God. So my money isn't, I don't, I can't give enough money for how much I love God. If I put $2 in the offering basket, that doesn't mean I love God two out of a trillion. And then he, said, and then he started saying, 
If you don't give anything today, you're selfish. And selfish starts with an S, just like Satan. I said, like, oh, the guilt trips. Because the Bible says test the spirits. And nowhere in the Bible does it say, if you don't give, you're like Satan. I mean, hey, Holy Spirit, have your way. You know, Holy Spirit, have your way. And when people get saved... Let them learn about the love of God first. Let them learn how to open up the Bible first. Praise and worship God first. Giving with a cheerful heart will come later. But to be putting guilt trips on people at a baptism service, zero scripture, just speak in his mind. If you don't give to me, you're satanic. And I, I, I nudged who I was with. I said, what about the baptisms that just occurred? What about those that just got born again? What about being saved and repenting and hell and heaven and Jesus and uh, if I don't give today, I'm satanic? And it was by no accident that there was over 100 guests there that day to support the baptisms. And, and then, I'll end with this. He, and he, funny story, you get on his Facebook and he's on a vacation in Mexico. I said, wow. So, <coughs> excuse me, you just twisted and turned everybody's arm to give to you, said they're satanic if they don't, and then you get on his Facebook a couple days later. He's in Mexico on the beach saying life is good. All right, Lord, have mercy. Please forgive me if I said anything, Lord, that wasn't pleasing to you. Holy Spirit, have your way. We want to close out with Isaiah 61. We'll start in verse 1 and just go. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the Lord of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of His splendor. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me. You must answer to the call of salvation because God is calling you today. Step out in faith and answer to His call. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Believe in your heart God raised Him from the dead and the Holy Spirit will come up inside you. The Lord wants to anoint you. He wants to use you and give you purpose and identity. If he can do it for Paul in the New Testament, if he can do it for me, he can do it for you. When I got saved, it sounded too good to be true. And I said, Lord, how can you save someone like me that has done everything I've done? And upon looking at Bible verses, I was brought to 1 Timothy 1.15. And I'll paraphrase where... Paul said that he was the worst of sinners. Timothy is my name. 115, verse 115 is my birthday, January 15th. My jaw dropped. The Lord said, Tim, if I could save Paul, if I could put this very verse as your name and your birthday, 1 Timothy 115 of the worst of sinners, if I can save you, I can save anybody. I wasn't born with a silver spoon, neither was Paul, neither were anybody, any other Holy Spirit filled believers. All you have to do is confess and believe right now. Don't let the enemy lie to you. Because he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. If you're broken, let God put the pe pick the pieces up and put them together. Seek him first in his righteousness, knowing that everything else will be added unto you. Proclaim freedom for the captives. Today you are going to be released from darkness. You are no longer a prisoner. 
but you are going to start speaking for the Lord, being used by the Lord. And remember, vengeance belongs to the Lord. Stop fighting in these battles that you're not supposed to be fighting in. Remember, the battle belongs to the Lord. I'm going to be open, honest, and transparent. Thank you for letting me vent a couple minutes ago. I was so disappointed about going to this baptism service and being manipulated for money. He says, if you don't give to me, you're satanic. I can't believe it. It's about becoming born again. It's all about Jesus. It's all about God. It's all about salvation. It's all about repenting, seeking, knocking, asking, persevering, picking up your cross right now. You are good. You are valuable. When God made you, he made something good. You are important. Come join the team. If you're fatherless, if you're familyless, <laughs> be adopted into the family of God because today God wants to adopt you as his own and call you his child and give you his Holy Spirit to mark you as his child. Thank you guys so much for your love, prayer, support, and contributions to the ministry. Please go visit the website at www.timothygrecoministries.org. Please share the YouTube links and just keep on persevering. Seek after Jesus. Keep fighting a good fight. We're in this fight together. You're not alone. I've got your back. God's got our back. Let him fight. Well, all we have to do is maintain the victory that he has already given to us. If nobody told you they love you today, I love you. God loves you. I pray you have a blessed rest of the day. In Jesus' name, let's go.